Hi, I'm Marie. Welcome to my kitchen. Today, I want to show you how to make a loaf of no meat sandwich bread. You prepare your dough in a mixing bowl. No messy, sticky fingers or dirty countertops to clean up. This recipe makes about 16 slices of sandwich bread. We will need three and a half cups of bread flour, one and a half cups of water, two tablespoons sugar, two tablespoons of vegetable oil, and one teaspoon of salt. In addition, we will use one teaspoon of active dry yeast, a quarter cup of water, and a teaspoon of sugar. I always activate the dry yeast first before using it because yeast loses its vitality if stored too long. Mix together and set it aside to cool for 5 minutes. When you see foam appear, you know the yeast is alive and working. If not, you can use it. Be sure to measure the flour precisely. That's three and a half cups. We'll be mixing the dough in a large bowl from start to finish. The larger the bowl, the easier to work with. Toss in the dry ingredients first. Use the handle of a stiff spatula. It has less resistance and easier to stir the dough with. Now add the liquid ingredients. Pour in the water gradually. Just stir until everything comes together. It takes only a minute or so. Scrape it down from the sides if it sticks there. Unlike a regular bread dough where you look for a ball shape and shiny finish, we want this somewhat wet and sticky. Lightly brush the side of the bowl with vegetable oil. This is to prevent the dough from sticking when it rises. Cover the bowl with plastic wrap and a kitchen towel to prevent the dough from drying. Let it proof at room temperature for about 5 hours. The long proofing time is to allow the gluten to stretch organically. This is the key to the no need recipe. The dough should more than double in size as it fermented. Now, punch down to deflate it. Next, using a spatula, fold it over a few times to release any trapped air bubbles. To prepare for baking, Brush the inside of a loaf pan with vegetable oil and dust it with flour. This helps the bread come out of the pan easily after baking. Now simply roll the soft dough into the pan. It's that easy. The dough should settle and fill the pan evenly. Or you can help to level it with a spatula. Garnish the top with some sesame seeds. We'll let it proof in the pan for 30 minutes more. This second proofing is important because it gives more volume and a finer texture to your bread. 
You can see the dough has risen a little more. A loaf even this size may lightly crack as the dough expands during baking. To control the direction of the crack, we'll score the top. I'm just going to slash right down the middle lengthwise. But you can score other patterns if you want your bread to look decorative. This is sticky and soft, so use a sharp, thin blade even a razor. Now, time for baking. Bake for 45 minutes in a preheated oven at 375 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 190 degrees Celsius. Mmm, I love the smell of bread baking. It's just so comforting to be in my kitchen right now. While it's still hot, brush the top with butter. This softens the crust and makes it easier to slice. But if you like a crunchy texture on top, leave this step out. When the loaf is cool enough to handle, turn it out onto a wire rack and leave it to cool completely before slicing. It may take as long as 45 minutes, depending on the room temperature. This bread is soft but also held its shape. It's perfect for your sandwiches. Homemade bread is healthier and always tastes better than the store bought. I hope you give this a try. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.